Welcome back to the Angry Man Podcast with Jason and Greg. So, Jay, I want to talk about a specific subject, and it's Errol Spence. And I think we're guilty of this as well to a certain degree because we don't preface a lot of our videos by saying if the rematch doesn't occur. But when you think about Terrence Crawford, the victory parades, Everything he's saying to the press in terms of wanting to move up and fight Canelo Alvarez, wanting to fight Jamel Charlo, Jamel talking about fighting uh, Terrence Crawford, Canelo talking about fighting Terrence Crawford, all these different conversations. It's almost like Errol Spence has been just completely dismissed like he doesn't exist anymore and doesn't have a rematch clause in place. Now, that's partly due to the fact of how the fight actually materialized. It happened in a way that a lot of us did not expect. And because of that, I think a lot of people are being dismissive. But at the same time, some of the same people that are kind of saying, I don't want to see a rematch. They're being somewhat dismissive of the opportunity for Errol Spence. There are some of the same people who are saying that Errol didn't look like Errol and they believe something was going on with Errol going into the ring. Most of which they believe it was something to do with dehydration. Now, I know Terrence Crawford fans who suddenly all of a sudden have been flooding our comment section is going to come in here and talk (laughs) shit about that. But this isn't a Terrence Crawford video. So please move on. Um, Errol has been pushed to the side, bro, as though like he doesn't exist anymore. And my thing is this. We've talked about this. You and I off the record. We talked about what we saw in that fight. There were instances where there was opportunity for Errol Spence and he didn't initiate or capitalize on those opportunities. I think Errol went into this fight with the wrong game plan. I truly do believe that their mantra, if you will, is do what brought you to the table. I heard Jamel Charlo say that earlier today. I just got to do it and be who I am and bring and do what I've always done to the table and that'll yield success I think Errol thought he was just simply going to walk Terrence Crawford down and break him and I always felt like and you heard this I mean we said it on our uh, prediction video in our preview video that he's going to have to rely on other skill sets to win this fight he's going to have to show diversity to win this fight it cannot just be I'm going to walk you down and I'm going to break you So I think that there's opportunity there for Errol Spence. I think he was weight drained. I think he would be a bit sharper at 154 pounds just by virtue of not being dehydrated. We've had Gary Russell Jr. on our show. He said something was wrong. Floyd has said something was wrong. Uh, A litany of people, Danny, a litany of people who have said that something didn't quite look right. So there's an opportunity for Errol Spence to get it back in blood. But he's going to have to he's going to have to make some changes. Man, He's going to have to change the mindset. He's going to have to go into the ring. He's going to have to improve on his skill. Now, we had FSU walk on the show this past Sunday. We do our show every Sunday, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And he mentioned that he felt that, you know, in hindsight, Errol is tailor made for him because he overextends. And Errol does overextend sometimes, but he doesn't do it all the time. And that's actually something that he can clean up. One of the things that caused Errol's problems is that he didn't vary his game. It was predictable. And Errol does have the ability to vary his game. We've seen him fight in different manners. He fought differently against Sean Porter than he did against Danny Garcia. I saw it with my own eyes. So I think there's an opportunity for him, Jay. We can't continue to push him to the side. Errol will be back. We'll see if he now he invokes this rematch clause in the next nine days. Um, So I'm speaking solely that he's going to do that. And I I think with Derrick James saying that in the rematch, they will absolutely win because he has the better fighter. He knows that there's an opportunity for him to get it back in blood. But this is a wake up call. The wake up call is every fighter isn't the same. And you have to bring other skills and attributes to to the table and not just rely on one thing, believing that that's the sole thing that's going to take you to victory. Because in this case against Terrence Crawford, it will not. Jay, 
Can Errol Spence get it back in blood? I think so. He has a chance to. We just, we just can't be solely dismissive of Spence. Yeah, <clears throat> I think he can get it back because um, it's a fight game. Anything can happen. Um, that fight, that fight with the first fight, to me, something was wrong with Errol for sure. Now, to your point, Errol can't do some of the stuff he was doing. Some of the stuff, mistakes he was making was like elementary stuff that he didn't make before, you know, some of it. Um, <clears throat> now the thing is the cat, the thing is, can he get it back in blood? Yes. But we're saying what Earl can do. We also know spin that no, but might do some different things as well. So we're just going to be, then there'll be a chess match, which we expected the first fight to be more or less, you know, a chess match and a war of attrition. And this rematch here, I think Spence will be a better fighter at 154. It's possible he can get it back. It's going to be tough. You know, because for one, we got to see where his psyche at, you know, where it's, it's all about mental. You know, if his mind, you know, some people may have your number. In this case, we won't know until they fight again. We'll know, I think we'll know early on in that, in the second, in the rematch, if Bud indeed has Spence's number from the get go. I think it's within the be established within the first couple of rounds. I agree. You know, if there's any doubt that Spence has in his head, you know, Bud's going to try to protest it. Bud's going to try to put that doubt in there immediately. I think Spence is a strong enough person where I don't think he'll let that get to him, but we just got to see if he's able to execute the, the proper game plan in this. You know, he has to listen also to some of the things that's being told to him. He also has, a, like you said, various jab. He just can't go with the same jab to the chest, jab to the chest, jab to the chest, and not faints, not going to the body, keeping his head on the center line. He hasn't always done that. You know, and that's what was kind of odd to me. I'm like, one that... <clears throat> that Bud had was faster because we knew Bud was faster. Mm -hmm. You know, some other fights have been faster than him as well. But Bud really didn't have to do really much in that fight, you know, because Spence really made it easy for him. And Bud's like, oh, you just going to leave it like that for me? I'll oblige you. I'll take that. You know, if it ain't broke, don't fix. Don't fix it. So I'm not mad at Bud for just doing the same thing round after round after round to him. Because Spence wasn't adjusting. So I think Spence can make adjustments to this next fight here and make it more interesting for sure. Yeah, I, you know, I saw ES News and they posted a video with Sugar Ray Leonard and Sugar Ray talked a little bit about the results of his first fight with Duran and, you know, just the mindset. And we've we've heard that story before from Sugar Ray Leonard, you know, getting your first loss. He's basically advising Errol Spence to just do it. Just get back in there. You got to put the loss behind you. That's what happened. In my opinion, Errol is a strong-minded person because you have to be strong-minded to come back from the accident that he came back from. Exactly. So, so if anybody has the mental fortitude and the ability to turn things around in a second fight, it is Errol Spence. And so I do give him a chance to get it back in blood. Is it probable? Based off what we saw, no. But is it possible? It absolutely is, and he shouldn't just be dismissed because at the end of the day, he still has a rematch clause. And no matter what, he's the truth and the big fish. So you guys tell us what you think in the comments section in regards to Errol Spence. Is it possible that he can get it back in blood? I think so. It's possible. Maybe not probable, but it's possible. Let us know what you think in the comments section. Don't forget to hate, like, comment, and subscribe. This is the Angry Man Podcast, AM Sports Media, and we are.